And the young lady I'm going to introduce to you today also did that. Now she probably doesn't need much introduction for most of you, but I want to tell you a little bit about her. She was so anxious to answer God's call that she finished high school a year early so she could get to Johnson University, Florida and begin her preparation. She has a double major and I, I texted her to ask her what her major was and she texted me back this, Bible and theology and intercultural studies with an emphasis on cross-cultural missions. Wow. wow. <laughs> I said, wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yes, I said, overachieving Morgan Grace Sims. <laughs> Morgan is a homegrown girl. She's from here. She's been here all of her life, and we've watched her grow up. And um, she's the youngest daughter of uh, Nancy and John Sims, and she's been part of our family since she was born. As a teenager, she was uh, active with the youth group, and they went on to CIY, Christ in Youth, events. And it was there that she was introduced uh, to missions. Now she was introduced to missions here too, but it made a real impact on her there, um, especially one called International Justice Mission. And some of you will remember that when she came back from that, she uh, did a fundraiser for them, the art project that some of you participated in, um, and she raised money for that mission. Well, after we um, going to Johnson, she's continued her interest in missions. And while there, um, this summer, she was able to participate in an internship in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm going to let you, let her tell you the rest of that story. Morgan Grace Sims. Isn't that a great little name for her? Yeah, amen. With, through an organi organization called Love Thy Neighborhood, um, and I partnered, worked with an uh, organization called Scarlet Hope through them. But first I want to tell you a story before I get into that. I want to tell you a story about a woman named Mary. Mary grew up in a poor family, and she spent her days trying to avoid her abusive mother and look for food. Her neighborhood was poor, and her family was poor, so she was very hungry often, and um, her mother was abusive and her father spent all day working and then all night drinking. And oftentimes, his check never made it home. He, come, he came home drunk most nights and <coughs> Mary grew up hungry and abused and lonely. Fast forward a while from Mary's childhood to she was about 15 and she fell in love with a man um, who she thought was the love of her life, and he ended up trafficking her. He sold her body and he abused her. And she desperately wanted to escape him, and she did. She found a way to escape him. But once escaped, she had no money, and she was hungry again. And so she went back to doing the only thing she knew how to do. She went back to strip clubs and brothels, and she spent 35 years in the sex industry. She spent 35 years trying to escape the sex industry. Until one day when she went to work at the strip club and some Jesus loving ladies came in and they fed her and they built relationships with her. And soon after lots of prayer and hard work, they helped her leave the industry for good. This summer I got to meet Mary and I got to work with her. She works at um, the front desk at Scarlet Hope. So I got to work with her and I got to hear her story and talk with her and she's an, an amazing human being. But Scarlet Hope, what they do is they go into um, strip clubs, illegal massage parlors, and they walk the streets that are known for prostitution in an effort to tell women, meet them where they are, and tell them that they're loved, that they're valued, 
and that our Jesus can get them out of whatever situation they're in. And so when I was up there working with um, Scarlet Hope, there are a lot of things that I did, but they gave me a time limit, so I'll only tell you my favorite. <laughs> um, every Thursday night, Scarlet Hope goes into the clubs and uh, illegal massage parlors, and they bring a homemade meal to uh, the women working. And I was not 21, so I could not go into a strip club legally. Um, so. Instead, my job, and some, with, with some other volunteers, was to stay outside and pray. And we prayed for the spiritual battle that was going on inside those clubs. And every night from, or every Thursday night from 10 p.m. to about 1 a.m., we would drive to the clubs around Louisville, Kentucky, and pray. And that was the most amazing part. I don't know if you've ever prayed from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., <laughs> but it can be quite exhausting. <laughs> but there's nothing quite like it. There's nothing quite like praying that late at night for Jesus to change a woman's life and literally set her free. It was amazing. I want to tell you another story. And this is a story I don't know the beginning to, a story I can only imagine the middle to and a story I only, almost wish I didn't know the end to. While I was working with Scarlet Hope, they got a call, the director got a call from the FBI. Now this isn't necessarily odd, since when we work with people um, in and out of the world of crime, um, but anyhow, they got a call from someone in the FBI who had found a body in a trash can outside the building. They were calling to see if we could identify this woman's body because they assumed that she was in some sort of um, prostitution or something on the streets like that, and that's the women that Scarlet Hope worked with. Scarlet Hope couldn't identify, we didn't know this woman, but it hit me that this is the end for a lot of these women in the sex industry. That their hope of getting out of the industry um, is oftentimes diminished because they know that this is how, for a lot of them, how their story ends. And it hit me that I have something really special. I have this light. I have Jesus. And they need Jesus. <laughs> and you don't quite know how special um, the light you have is until you see how dark the darkness is in the world. And so I want to tell you that I won't stop fighting for justice. I won't stop running towards the darkness. And that's why I'm going to Cambodia in the spring to see what God is doing there, to see what trafficking looks like there. It's why I will continue with my missions degree. Because of um, this motivation of, of having something so great and wanting to share it. That's why I will continue. And I want to thank you for all of your support, all of your prayers. This is an extremely loving church, and I am so happy that I am homegrown here. <laughs> um, I just ask that you keep me and Scott Hope in your prayers, and I thank you for all that you guys do. You know, if, if you've had any part um, of helping to uh, raise this young woman up, um, you can be uh, blessed by God because you've had a, a hand in her growth and uh, in her maturity and what she's gone through in her life. Um, just a couple things before I begin. Uh, one is uh, this coming Saturday. We are having a Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, there have been some ladies who have uh, been signing individuals up. If you uh, are able to come to that, uh, if you're visiting with us and want to come to that, uh, there'll be some ladies out front uh, grabbing a hold of your arm and, and saying, sign up, no, asking you to sign up and to come, and uh, love having you there. 
Uh, also, uh, the youth are having a pancake breakfast on the 18th, and uh, they're selling these tickets, uh, $7 a piece. And um, so uh, if you can buy your tickets uh, either today or next week, you can go out uh, at the coffee bar and you can pick those up uh, there. And I'd uh, love to be able to uh, eat. You know, you can eat uh, you know, early. If you come early at 9, you can eat then and eat later. It's just eat all day um, type of thing. Um, our food pantry uh, for Below a Head Start actually is for Thanksgiving. Uh, looks like it's coming along well. Uh, we're still going to do that for a couple more weeks, so if you are uh, willing to bring those items, uh, we appreciate that. One specific thing that uh, we want to mention is uh, the brochure that's in your bulletin. And um, I know that the word in is kind of a little dark, but uh, it's getting plugged in. And the idea is, with this, there are a number of ministries here at CCBS that you can be, be involved with. And we would like for you, if you would, to go through those, browse through those, and see where an area you might want to get plugged into, and uh, just fill out that insert that's there. You can give it to us today, uh, next week, or whenever you, you feel like that, but just put, you know, I would like to get plugged into, and then name an area where you might feel your gifts or your talents might lie. Uh, we just want to get, try and get as many people plugged in as possible. If you are already plugged in to an area, uh, please mark that down and then get that to us. Uh, Chris Wagner is heading up the Connections Ministry, and we uh, are wanting to kind of gain this information so that we know where people are, are fitting in and where they want to fit in. And so if you would consider doing that for us, uh, like I said, you can either give it to Chris Wagner if you don't know her. She's right here. She, she doesn't like a whole lot of up front. <clears throat> you can see me or just, just put them in the offering plate and we'll make sure that they get uh, taken care of. So be aware of, uh, of that. We're just trying to get information and trying to get people plugged in, uh, especially new individuals who uh, are here and have been here for a long time. This morning I want to talk to you about faithfulness uh, or being something thankful and, and have an, uh, a, a thankful heart and uh, within that being faithful with your thankfulness and uh, I just want to share with you a quote from George Washington. Anybody know George Washington personally? Okay, just, uh, just checking. Um, you never know. Uh, but George Washington said this. He said, it is the duty, it's the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly to implore His protection and favor. Great quote. And I think he's on to something here. Because seeing the hand of God in our lives daily, responding to His will with thankfulness instead of resistance, I think is the key to unlock many, many virtues that he describes. So between now and Thanksgiving, I want to take a look at some of these gifts and some of these benefits, and I want to identify God's gifts to us and celebrate those gifts with a heart of thanks, uh, looking at what God has truly blessed us with. And if we desire to reap this harvest of gratefulness in our lives, we need to cultivate those qualities. Uh, the disciplines and the habits and the, the character of thankfulness in our life and to, uh, uh, to, to move toward that uh, in our life. But because thankfulness uh, just doesn't happen. Qualities of life just don't happen. In the book of Psalm, verse uh, 1 of chapter 9, it says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all of your wonderful deeds. In 1 Chronicles 16, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. And in James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift comes from God. You know, when we recognize that truth, it helps facilitate a greater relationship with God. It brings us closer to God, and, and, and it forms that bond with God. Uh, there are disciplines and habits that we can develop that will help us to create uh, a better relationship uh, with God and help us to uh, uh, create a heart of thankfulness. 
And so today there's just a couple things I want to share with you. And one is we need to have a heart of thanks and it requires exercise. It requires us to exercise that thanksgiving, to completely uh, work on that thanksgiving that we should have in our lives, regularly giving thanks to God, <laughs> regularly coming before Him. And we need that thankfulness before God. Uh, because I think so many times we have criticism as our default attitude. Uh, we always complain about things. Instead of that, we need to be a thankful in our life. Because when you see things that are good, that are happening in your life, isn't it good to be thankful for those things? Okay? Do you have things that are good in your life every day? Sure you do. Sure you do. And we got to point those things out. We've got to thank God for those things that are good in life. Now, we, we, we complain occasionally. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> but, let me put a little phrase that. Don't we? Yes. Okay? I complain too. Okay? Uh, you know, somebody asked me this morning, said, how's it going? I said, ah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why well, well, complain? Then somebody goes, how, we went, a bunch of us went kayaking yesterday. Somebody asked me, how's your shoulders? I said, they're killing me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I said, actually, they feel pretty good because I took Advil. Uh, <laughs> well, for Advil, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be hurting. But, but we complain. We complain about everything. But practice responding to your complaining uh, with finding things to be thankful for. Isn't that a good response? You know, yeah, I can say, you know what, uh, my shoulders hurt from going kayaking, but you know what, I, I was able to go kayaking, you know, to see beautiful things. That, that we didn't see any gators. A couple of people saw a gator or two, maybe. Uh, I, I'm glad I didn't. I did see a snake off in the distance, which I'm glad it was off in the distance. And at one point, we saw a bunch of turtles. And at one point, it was really cool because we're, we're on our way back. We're just floating down the river. And all of a sudden, a I mean, probably 30 white birds flew off, flew right over the top of us. Everybody says, don't look up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they laid it on a tree, and this tree just full of white um, birds. Just beautiful. And then we realized what probably scared them was a gator, so we took off. <laughs> you know? But, you know, I think that so many times we, we complain and we criticize when actually we should be more thankful and exercise that thankfulness to God in those situations. You know, we, we need to rewire our brains. We need to rethink in order to be as proficient in recognizing the good that comes in our life and identify uh, those things it, 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 as well as identifying the bad things in, in our life. Exercise engages our self-control. We we have self-control in what we're thinking and a constant focus on the value of, uh, of blessings and thankfulness to God. It, was, it bestows uh, so much blessing on us. God bestows so much blessing on us. But we just need to be thankful for that. Okay? You all thankful for waking up this morning? Is, is that a blessing or a curse? You know? Giving thanks with your whole heart, it takes work and a consistent thankfulness to God. Now, not only do we need to exercise that, we need to be persistent in that. Or pers we have to have our perspective in that. Persistence is the last one. I'll get to that. So I just gave you the answer. In, uh, in Thessalonians, Paul writes this. He says, give thanks in all circumstances because that's God's will. Well, why do we need to give thanks in all circumstances? Because we lack perspective. We don't have clarity in our life, and we don't possess that clarity. We look at any given situation, we say, uh, with certainty, why, why does that happen? Have you ever, you ever thought about that? You ever, you ever thought about why is this particular situation happening in my life? You know, we, we're not really seeing it clearly. We don't know uh, that God is in the middle of it, okay? Uh, and yet He is there. He is working for the good to bring that uh, good out of that. Uh, there's a scripture that says God works for good for those who love Him. Now, mind you, that verse, God works for the good for everybody? No, for those who love Him. And sometimes people say, well, why do bad things happen to me? 
why isn't something good coming out of that? Well, maybe we need to be getting loving God the way we're supposed to love God. I mean, you've got to think about things like that. God is in the middle of every situation. God is in the middle of your pain, your suffering, your hurt, your brokenness. He's in the middle of your joy and your happiness and, and, and the things that are good in your life, your family, your friends. He's right in the middle of all of those things. No matter what you're going through, in every circumstance, no matter what it might be, we need to give thanks because God is there. Every circumstance. I mean, He's redeeming every situation. He, he's sustaining every situation in your life. And He upholds you so that you can be thankful for that. I mean, if we were left to our own devices, our own life, our own control, all we're going to do is focus on the event. All we're going to focus on is the things that happen around us, and we're not going to perceive uh, the design that God has in that circumstance. Because we're so focused on our own selves, you know, like, I can handle this, I can handle that, and, and we can't. We have to see God working in and through those situations. We surpass our experiences, uh, and, and we're able to look above the circumstance and see God's handiwork. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about the things that have gone in your past yesterday or last week or the week before, last month, and, and have seen those circumstances, and you, you look back and you go, you know, I, I've tried to do stuff on my own, and, and, I, and I haven't been able to do it. And yet you got through it. Right? You got through it. How would you get through it? Because God was there with you. And he sustained you through that. A man by the name of A.W. Tozer said it this way. He said, perhaps it takes a pure faith, a pure faith to praise God for unrealized blessings than for those that we often enjoy or we, we, we enjoy now. In an article entitled, Not All Faith is Pure Faith, Ed and Joshua Smith share some key concepts, and these are some great concepts about pure faith. It says that the Bible tells us that our faith needs to be refined, which suggests that there is something less pure in our faith. Is that true? Amen. That God is, re, is refining <coughs> us every day. He says God is always at work in our lives, bringing the fire of refinement to impure gold and exposing the dross. He, God's exposing all kinds of things in our life. And when he refines us, gold has to be refined. Gold has to go through the fire. Okay? You go through certain trials and temptations and problems in your life that God is re refining that in your life so that you're going to come out pure on the other side. Your faith is going to grow on the other side. And you're going to stand taller on the other side because you know that when you've gone through those things, God has always been right there in the middle of it. But you've got to have a different perspective about it. You have to have the right perspective about it. And when your faith is refined by God's fire, blessings are going to flow from His overabundance. Because He's just going to bless you and bless you and bless you. Amen. So whatever the circumstances that we find ourselves in, a pure faith perspective, I think, will call for clarity in, in God's sustaining proficiency uh, of, of the weight of the conditions that we find ourselves in. And now since I already gave you the last point, it's per, well, one of the points is persistence. So we, we have an exercise. We exercise that thankfulness on a daily basis. We, we got to look at everything that we go through and we, we give thanks for. We, we have to have a right perspective and see that God is working in and out of all circumstances in our life. But this one, last one is persistence because uh, um, it might seem trivial it's just to give this advice but you can think about it our default position is to expect that things will and should go well for us because our attitude is always this why do bad things happen to us right because the opposite see is what we're thinking well I'm a Christian everything should be going swell right I'm a child of God. I shouldn't have any problems in my life. I mean, 
I should be I, I should be healthy, wealthy, wise, right? We we have this thought, this default thinking that nothing bad should ever happen to us because we have a life with God. When when life runs smoothly, it's easy for us to forget that life itself is a gift from God. Life itself. We don't always see the ways that he protects us. We don't always see the way that God guides us along. And it's good, isn't it, to spend time reflecting on the difficulties you have already walked through and are walking through in your life. You know, you look back and go, damn, man, this is a time in my life. I mean, we all do it. There's a time in my life, man, God has, God has been right there with me. And who's to say that he stopped walking through the fire with me? Has anybody ever stood in a furnace that's been stoked with fire? Anybody? Anybody? So we can't stand up here and go, I'm like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? We can't do that. But when they were thrown into a fiery furnace, who was in there with them? Jesus. Jesus. As far as we understand that that individual was the Lord. But how many of you have gone through a fiery trial in your life? Even recently. And you can say, God has been with me all the time. Because you've walked through those difficulties, he's going to walk with you. And with enough distance, you can begin to recognize that good can come out of those experiences. You look back and go, I know God was with me, and the good can come out of that. Maybe it gave birth to a new blessing. Maybe it built up your stamina. Maybe it built up your endurance to... to to, to help you grow. But either way, learning to see the past trials and problems in our life through eternity's perspective, I think it enables us to be more thankful during those times that we struggle, even now. And even times we're going to struggle tomorrow. We can always be thankful for God. And it helps us to identify a couple things. But one, it helps us to identify the influence of a heart of things. Because the influence is so important for others to see how we react to the things we go through. I mean, many people have walked through all sorts of horrendous experiences. And when someone sees your thankfulness to God through your experiences, then it's going to help develop them to become a more thankful person. They're going to appreciate your thankfulness when things are going so well in their own lives. Because it strengthens people. And people can be an example. You can be an example to someone. But it, it also identifies the potential for heart of things. Because, again, many people have walked through these experiences, yet it seems that those who are the most thankful have learned to recognize God in his hand in everything. And the fortitude and the gift that God gives to all of us. I mean, thankfulness is a, is a potent uh, example, isn't it? it? It's a potent motivation for you and I to be thankful to God. It enables us to see past our experience, to embrace the way that God interacts with us, how he's moving in and out of your life on a daily basis. Not, not only thankful people are able to draw strength from the gratitude, but also the fact that it empowers others to have that kind of perspective also, to see their future, to see where God is going to move you in your future. To see how he's moved you from your past and moved you better in your life. 
God will help you see that the exercising of your thankfulness will bring a new perspective for you, and you can persist in that through the rest of your life, knowing that your thankfulness is an influence to other people and the potential that it brings uh, to the people around you. I'll go back to what George Washington said. Listen, it is the duty of all nations, not just ours, it's the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and to humbly implore His protection and favor. You see, if we individually thank God and be able to thank God, if we individually are able to obey His will and be grateful for His benefits, if we individually implore His protection and favor, maybe, just maybe, the nations all around us will heed that call also. Because here's the thing. It's not up to our government for us to have a Christian nation. It's up to you and me. If we want this nation to be a Christian nation, we need to look at the church. If we're falling far short of being a Christian nation, we need to look at ourselves. Not the government. We need to individually look at where we are as a child of God. And are we being thankful for the blessings that He's given to us in our nation? There's a great verse. You all probably have heard it. If you haven't, let me share with you. The verse goes something like this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and then I will heal their land. Not until then. But we as a Christian people need to humble ourselves, seek His face, and if we aren't doing that as a Christian people, we will not have a Christian nation. You see, men like George Washington was a man who had Christian principles. And his Christian principles, along with many others, put into play our nation as a Christian nation because they were Christian men who fought for Christian lives. So what's happened to the government? We've not put Christian men in those offices. Amen. We haven't. We have not put Christian men in, the off, in those offices to run a Christian nation. And so we individually need to live our lives in a right way as a thankful Christian to know that God is going to work for good for those who love Him. Do you love Him? Do you love Him really? That you can be so thankful that you're exercising that on a daily basis. When you wake up in the morning, thank you God for getting me up. 